Hi there, my name is Danny Wallace and I work for Scottish Wood. Today I'm going to do a short video on behalf of Ashes, that's the Association of Scottish Hardwood Sawmillers, and we're doing it in the yard here at Scottish Wood. I'm going to do the video on blade maintenance, and that's for our sawmills in the yard. And the blade maintenance that I'm going to show you and discuss with you is the sharpening and setting of the bandsaw blades. Here at Scottish Wood, we run Woodmiser sawmills, and on these we run Woodmiser double hard blades, along with another affordable option from Ripper 37, used for cutting both softwoods and hardwoods. When we're talking about blade maintenance, we are talking about the sharpening process as well as the setting process. And through sharpening, we should ensure that we're catching not only the tip of the tooth, but the gully, as well as the underside, the hook of the tooth, to ensure good wear and lifespan of the blade. If this process is not carried out correctly, it can lead to splits and cracks on the blade that when used through milling, it will lead to breaks of the blades, can result in loss of timber and downtime on the mill through trying to salvage that broken blade. A blade does have a lifespan and you need to, when before sharpening, look over the blade to make sure that there's none of these cracks appearing and also to ensure as the blade's life grows to an end, it will become thinner on thickness as well as on width. Uh, at Scottish Wood here, we like to try to ensure we catch the blade before breaking at the end of its life by measuring the distance from the back of the blade to the gully and as it hits the kind of limit, then we would just discard this blade and save any time sharpening and any downtime on the mill. The setting process is used to ensure that when milling, the boards come out true and flat, do not have scores across them, and there's no wavering of the blade as you're milling. To bring this back, we use the tooth setter, and that is used to ensure the teeth are pushed in the right direction. So you'll see on the blade that there is one tooth that is protruding out to the top, one that is protruding down the bottom and one that is just straight which is used to clear the sawdust from the cut it's called the raker tooth if the setting of the teeth is too high you'll result in scoring of the boarding and as i said if it's not high enough then you'll get wavering of the blades here at scottish wood we have found that as we cut both hardwoods and softwoods we're aware that you should use a higher set on softwoods and a lower set on hardwoods, but we went for a happy medium to ensure that we can cut, switch between logs quickly and still produce nice flat boarding. Here at Scottish Wood, we use a Woodmiser BMS 250 for sharpening our blades. As I said previously, before we sharpen the blades, we inspect them for any damage. And as you can see from the teeth in this blade, that it's clearly hit either metal or stone. Here you can see what happens when we're milling and we hit a nail that's hidden within a log. The blade has taken a dive and it's got trapped. Wedges have had to be used to remove this blade. Before we sharpen the blade, we unfold it. Give it a clean, make sure there's no extra sawdust debris caught up on the blade that might uh, disturb the sharpening. The sharpener has three arms as well as a clamping uh, on the front. Once it's secured in place, then make sure that the blade is resting on the guides on the ends of these arms. Once the blade is secured within the clamp, we make sure that the feed arm is pulled into the back of the hook of the tooth. We lower the grinding wheel, and then we need to ensure that the blade is at the right height before we start the sharpening process. As you can see from these pictures, 
if a blade is too low, it is not going to catch in the bottom of the gully. If the blade is too high, then it's going to catch the top of the tooth before going in under the hook. And when it's in a good position, you should see no gap around the grinding wheel. Once we're happy with the position, we can turn on the grinding wheel and just do a double check to make sure that we are taking and grinding enough off the blade and catching the full hook, gully and tip of the tooth. Grind adjustment can also be used using the dial on the feed arm to ensure that the underneath the hook is being caught by the grinding wheel. Again, once we're happy with the position of the wheel and we're happy with how much work the grinding wheel is doing, we then need to turn lubrication on to ensure that the blade does not heat up while sharpening. It also helps to increase the longevity of the grinding wheel. Once lubrication is on, we then apply a magnet to the back of the blade and this marks the tooth where we want the blade sharpener to stop sharpening on. So there's a sensor at the other side as the blade progresses round, then passes the sensor and it stops the whole process. The grinding wheel stops, lubrication stops. You can see after the grinding wheel has hit the teeth, there should be a shine off the top of them, again on the gully and under the hook of the tooth. If there is not, and you can still see blackening, then it means that the blade has not been sharpened properly and it will need to go round again. After sharpening, the blade should be wiped clean of any excess oil and any burr should be removed from the inside of the blade as this will quickly dull the blade if not removed and could cause issues to the timber. As mentioned in the introduction, the other part of blade maintenance is the setting and we use this caliper to check the setting of the teeth. So it goes over the tooth and when pressure is put on to see how much set we have on the tooth, ideally we want it to be sitting at around 25, and we usually would only set it once this drops to around about 20, 21. The grinding wheel needs to be changed from time to time to make sure that the blade is being sharpened properly because as mentioned before, if not, it can lead to blade breakages which will lead to downtime on your mill. Here is our Woodmiser BMD 250 setter. At Scottish Wood we have two different mills uh, one is a wider uh, mouth on it, which has more teeth, uh, 225, and the smaller mouth mill has 210 teeth. So we need to set this on the machine, otherwise it will continue to set uh, after it passes its finish point and starts setting the wrong teeth in the wrong directions. We're putting the blade on the setter. I'm going to recheck uh, the set of the blade to judge how hard uh, the clamp is going to need to press on the tooth to put the correct setting on it. Now, depending on age of the blade will also depend on the force that is needed to apply to make the tooth bend and stay in the correct position. If the um, the blade is older, it will take more force than if it's a newer blade, it will bend and stay in position a lot easier. So it takes a bit of skill and experience with the blades and to get set right, uh, the force right from that clamp.
once the play the blade is set in to the blade clamps and secured with the hand clamp, the blade is then lowered or heightened into position so that just the tip of the tooth is half in force applied. Once the blade is in the correct position for pressure to be applied, we then give it the test run, mark the teeth that we have just applied pressure to as distractions can happen. We then get the caliper and check to see where we're set and lies now. Like I said, hopefully it's round about where we want it to be at the 25 mark or below so we can add a bit more force on the next trial. Okay, with the blade skewered in position, move it along to the next set of teeth, apply the hand clamp and go for a test run. You'll never get this right first time, so it's good to get to go maybe below where you think it's going to need, as if you go too high, you're going to need to bend the tooth back and restart. Whereas if it's a bit lower, then you can cope with that one or two teeth being set a bit less as long as the rest of the blade has been correctly set. And once we've rechecked and are happy with the set to be applied, the blade is then reinserted, secured. And then we can lower the feed arm to automatically feed the blade round, ensuring it's in behind the hook of the tooth before taking the machine out of manual. And as I've selected it twice, I've told them the counter that there has been six teeth set, so that's two on each side, and the rake are left, and it'll count until the counter goes to 210 before the machine will come to a stop. Once the blade has come right round, then double check both sides of the blade to ensure that the correct setting has been applied the whole way around. can then be folded and put into the shark box ready for milling. Thank you for your time. I hope this was, video was useful to you and happy milling.